We will start by opening up a brand new part file to create our custom tool from. We'll start a sketch on the front plane and we will draw the tool shape that we're going to use inside of SOLIDWORKS CAM. We'll also add an axis for reference. For this example, we'll throw a few dimensions on. Just for reference to show how I regular tool would look. You will need to apply dimensions that meet your tooling specification. The next step is to do a revolve to create our tool. It is important to know that for the tooling here, if you're going to use the mill tool method versus, part sim versus a SOLIDWORKS part, you'll want to have one body that rotates around the axis with the origin being at the end of the tool, at the end point of the tool. From here, we'll go to SOLIDWORKS CAM and we'll go to user defined tool slash holder. We'll save the tool as a mill turn tool or a mill tool and it'll ask for a location of where to store the tool at. <clears throat> you can put these in any custom location. In our example, we will save it at in our documents. It would be recommended to save this in a network location that anyone can access if you're using multiple machines with SOLIDWORKS CAM. You can use a SOLIDWORKS part for reference that, that has a little more capability, but in the traditional sense of mill tooling for a custom tool, this is the original method of adding it for SOLIDWORKS CAM. We will select OK and that is now saved as a representation. Our next step is to open the technology database and specify a user-defined tool. Go to our mill tool tooling, we'll go to user-defined tools, and we can take any of these and just create a copy. So we'll create a copy and we'll put it at the bottom. At this point, you can add your custom information. And then for your tool path name, you will point to the location where that tool is stored. In our example, it is here as a dovetail. This method is the same that you used for tooling holders. You can also define a specific material group if you know that this tool is only used for unique material conditions. By default, it's set to be used in any material condition. We will select Save, and you can see the information updates. It is important to understand that this information here does need to be filled out because this will aid in the setup of the tooling. In our example, we are only concerned with the basic overview of setting this up. So from here, once the dovetail is saved, we'll go back to SOLIDWORKS and we will start with part that we will actually use this cutter on. We now have the profile that we need to cut in our sample part. Inside of SOLIDWORKS CAM, we will do a interactive feature recognition to define this as a strategy we are going to use. And we will create a 2.5 axis feature for reference. In this example, we will select open profile and select our edge. We will select our depth of the profile. And make sure our direction is to the correct side. For our strategy, we will pick finish. 
because we do not want to do a chamfer on this profile. We want to start with a finished profile that would be our one pass going through this cutter. We will then generate operation plan and as you can see it adds a 0.5 flat end mill by default. We will now substitute the half inch flat end mill for our custom tool that we created previously. We will add it from our library under user defined features. We will select the tool and then once it is added to our tool crib we will hit select again so it becomes the designated tool for this specific operation. You may need to adjust your lead in and lead out depending upon the size of the tool. Another area that may be checked depending upon your tool is the CNC compensation, whether you want compensation on or off for your tool path center or location. The images in the dialog box show you the difference between these settings. As you can see, the tool is now added as tool 17 and the name of the description that I created. From here, we will generate the toolpath. And if you were to simulate the toolpath, you will now see it being simulated. From here, once your toolpath is adjusted, this toolpath here would need further adjustment. But once the toolpath setting is adjusted to the way that you want, you can go ahead and do save operation plan, either through the right click menu or from the toolbar up here. And when you select save operation plan, you now have the ability to create a new strategy that can be used over and over. I will create a new one with a unique name. And from here, I have the ability to specify when and where I want this strategy to be used how deep the feature is, and how big of geometry it can be used for. You can adjust these numbers depending upon the size of profile that you want to use this specific setting for. We will select OK, and you can now see I have a new custom strategy called Training Example. If we were to add a new feature in SolidWorks, let's say we have mirror this to the other side, Now when I come into my 2.5 axis features, and in some instances your tooling can be used for feature recognition, and other instances you will want to do interactive as I'm showing here. Select our profile, and then we can select our training example. Once we have our training example selected, we can pick our geometry, hit OK, and we now have that geometry that can be reused. As you can see, when I generate operation plan, it grabs the custom tool. And when I generate tool path, it remembers my lead in and lead out settings. This allows for more automation down the road by reusing custom tools and custom settings to speed up your programming operation.